Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get us kicked off. I am uh, Jamaica Stevens. I'm co-founder with Caitlin here of the Open Future Coalition. And I am deeply honored today to have the good pleasure of welcoming you fine folks to our, to our gathering. We are kicking off day one of our three-day Open Future Forum, which to us is a culmination of the work and the relationships and the sort of collaborative efforts that we've been weaving since we really came together, um, honestly, after probably many lifetimes and many bodies of work that came together in this formation in January of 2021, I believe. So we're coming up on our two years. And this particular moment here in the Northern Hemisphere, which is fall and kind of at the harvest time for us feels like a culmination of this rich ecosystem that we've been gravitating and cultivating and all of you and those who will be joining this week and those who couldn't join to us are a reflection of this ever growing impact ecosystem that is emerging itself. I feel like we're playing sort of this micro risal function is the way I like to say it in our shared ecosystem, providing this opportunity to listen and sense where the resources are and where the resources are needed and, and sort of where are parts of the shared forests, shared ecosystem flourishing, um, where do they need more resourcing and how can we best route and wisely nourish the things that are growing between all of us. And so we've played like a connector both with our open impact platform, but also through our programming and through all the relationship building and the working groups. And obviously this summit is an expression to us of our commitment to hold good space for this concept of radical collaboration and take it from a concept that I think many people are attracted to this sort of disruptive language of like, what do we mean by radical collaboration? I think for us, the intent is to learn together how to be a humans at a great transitional moment, but how to be humans on this living world, on a living planet, a living ecosystem during this great flux and transition and how to lean in together towards what it truly means to belong to each other and belong to place and what it truly means to show up and roll our sleeves up to do the work that is both innovative and necessary and to learn and harvest the best of our wisdoms and insights for you know many generations what have we culminated to as a species and where are we heading together what kind of future do we not only want to create, but are actively showing up in our daily efforts to ensure that we create together. And for us, radical collaboration means moving through what tends to silo us or separate us, what tends to uh, keep us competitive or uh, not really visibly seeing each other, uh, you know, scarce for resources or time or energy. And instead, how by leaning into radical collaboration can we feel nourished? Can we feel more capable? Can we feel um, more possibility into these sort of audacious goals and dreams that some of us have for, again, not only what's possible, what has to be done on the planet at this time for not only our sake, but for the next generations to come. So it's a compelling moment and a call to significant action and to act with as much humility and wisdom and grace and also fierce courage that we can at this moment. So that's the call and invitation for us. The Open Future Forum is an invitation to step into a space together, to meet, to explore, to get under the hood a little, to be willing to sort of roll up our sleeves. Uh, we actively curated these sessions to have both the opportunity for interactive and cross-sectoral dialogue at really interesting intersection points in the shared ecosystem, calling from multiple perspectives, sort of across the divide <laughs> interculturally and, you know, across the different sort of, you know, funders, practitioners, ecologists, sort of, we, we intentionally wove a dynamic, you know, invitation container for this kind of conversation to happen. But for us, conversation is no longer enough. Conversation is the opener to how we can traction hack together and really look at those places where our work starts to dock port, where we find the elegant fit of how what you're doing feeds what I'm doing and how we find our way to grow capacity to collaborate together, we're all more capable of achieving, again, what has to be done. So <clears throat> we also have sessions that are about 
growing body practice. Um, our friends from the Future Architects are here and this concept of guilds. The Guild of Future Architects is helping us host this morning because we wanna grow the capacity of these various verticals to have more ability to move in common, to be cooperative, but then realize where these guilds cross-pollinate and are mutually relevant to each other and intersect. So we have practice sessions to see if we can deepen the best practices, the models and the examples and learn forward together. And then also throughout this whole three-day session, we have discrete demonstration projects, things that we are actively launching, that our partners are actively launching, that are opportunities to model and demonstrate on the ground in tangible and tactical ways, uh, you know, these system shift points in whether it's economic and ecological or social change. Um, we are actively moving on things right now and we're really excited to have the opportunity to showcase what's in motion and what's active. So it's gonna be a dynamic couple of days. And um, as we've invited everybody, we welcome you to join the sessions that you feel most alive about. Um, but if you come in, please try to stay for the whole time to, to not disrupt the field, but jump in, jump into things that feel uh, both something that you're an expert subject matter in. We have opportunities for participation, although we've curated some sort of anchoring voices to sort of present and be speakers around subject matter. We actively welcome your participation. We will open up space for there to be dialogue and for you to add your thoughts and your expertise and your wisdom and your inquiries into each one of the sessions. Um, along the way also, <clears throat> we just welcome you to maybe lean into something that isn't your normal wheelhouse. Uh, get curious about something that you haven't yet maybe spent time in, but this interesting concept or uh, an interesting project or an interesting idea for you, please jump into things. And at the end, like we've said of all of the sessions, we will offer the opportunity for recordings and also the opportunity for follow-up for us. This is not a one time experience. Like I said, this is a cadence and a rhythm of culminating what we've worked on so far, but really looking to traction hack. What are we all working on to the future? So we will be providing follow-up events and other opportunities to continue any discussions or dialogues that you've sparked here. Um, so I think that that's plenty for me for the moment, other than just to say genuine gratitude. Um, you have a million things I'm sure on your plate as we all do to show up this morning and throughout this session, it means the world to us. It shows that there are a lot of incredible people who are actively ready to lean in and radically collaborate together and learn how we do that more efficiently and hopefully with more joy and uh, you know, with more nourishment between all of us. It's, a, it's an interesting moment. And I think we realize we need each other to keep the fire lit and keep burning bright in these times of change. So thank you very much for being here. And I'm gonna hand that to my co-founder, Katie. Um, oh, before I do, I just wanna thank the partners that have made this possible. And then I'm gonna hand that to Katie to talk a little bit more about our work and get us set up for today. I wanna to deeply thank our co-conveners, the ASBN, the American Sustainable Business Network, uh, Bluefin Investment, Chris is here from Australia, uh, the Eco Restoration Alliance, El Puente, Global Unity. I see you, Elliot. Thank you. Guild of Future Architects who are hosting this session with us. Heartland P5, Mark and Charlie, I see you here. Uh, Imagine World, Institute of Ecotechnics, Deborah, thanks for being with us. The Intergen Family, Kinship Earth, North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State Institute, which is one of our new program partners we're excited to share about tomorrow. Partnerships for Change, Pro-Social World, Reconsider, Toxic Free Future for Our Children, and Triangle Foundation. Genuinely, thank you. It's an honor and you've been so supportive in helping make this all happen. Now with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand that over to Caitlin. Thank you everybody so much. Thank you, Jamaica. It's so wonderful to see all of your faces here. Um, I'll provide a brief background on kind of what we're up to more broadly with Open Future Coalition. And then I'm eager to hand this off to Miguel. Uh, but our intent with Open Future Coalition is to recognize, connect, and support those who are already tirelessly working to solve the world's most pressing challenges. Uh, we came about because we recognized that so many incredible solutions uh, at this time when so many are kind of scrambling and wondering, how are you gonna solve all of these crises? <laughs> We've been looking around for years and seeing so many incredible solutions already all around us, including uh, those represented by all of you uh, here on the screen. Um, but we've also seen that many of these solutions are often disconnected from one another, from the resources that we need, from the tools that we need to scale. And so our intent 
is to develop social, technological, and economic tools that resource community-based solutions at a global scale so that we can learn forward together and apply these solutions in a contextually relevant way. And we see this particular uh, event as simply an extension of, of that. It's a, it's a uh, continuation of, of the work that we do every day. And so as Jamaica mentioned, we see Open Future Forum as both a culmination and as a spark. Um, it features the harvest from many of our collective efforts over the past nearly two years, um, but it also features many starting points of new initiatives uh, that we aim to continue to nurture and apply to action over the coming months and years. And we have an open invitation to you all to be a part of these happenings. Um, I'll also add that when you are SVP'd, uh, you did receive a link to a space in our open impact platform. Uh, the platform is just about to enter its beta. And we're currently working with about 170 organizations in 16 countries. Um, and the intent of that space we've set up uh, for you all is not just as sort of a community connection tool where you're welcome throughout the week and beyond to connect with one another, to introduce yourselves, to ask questions, to engage in discussion, um, but it also provides process management and measurement tools. And as um, you know, new projects even might emerge out of the course of this week, uh, we aim to cultivate a space both for the harvest from this week's sessions, but also to provide contexts for ongoing collaboration and, and shared projects together. Um, so we'll keep you in the loop on opportunities there, but we do encourage you to get in there and, and engage um, if you haven't yet so that you can connect further with so many of the wonderful folks here. Um, and then today in particular, we're diving into the topic of civic infrastructure, energy in the built environment. Uh, but we see this as a focal point, as everything we do is a whole system. Um, and, and we see that weaving present in every one of our efforts. Um, but we very much look forward to diving into this particular topic today. Uh, before we do, um, we do invite uh, an invocation from Miguel Rivera um, from the Guild of Future Architects. We're thrilled, as Jamaica mentioned, to be partnering with the Guild of Future Architects on our opening sessions this week, as well as throughout the forum. Uh, at its core, Future Architecture is a values-based collaborative approach to actualizing systemic change, which I think very accurately describes what so many of us are here to do. Um, and Miguel will be followed by a provocation from Taib Smith, also from the Guild of Future Architects and Growth Collective, to bring us a little bit more into the specifics of civic infrastructure and what we'll be discussing today. But without further ado, I hand it off to you, Miguel. Thank you very much, uh, Caitlin. Thank you, Jamaica. And I want to greet everybody wherever you are on this planet. <laughs> so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever time zone or hemisphere you find yourselves in. So I want to take a moment and I'm going to ask you to just check yourself. Where are you? Where are you? Where are your shoulders? Are they up in your ears? Are your, uh, is your jaw clenched? Where are your feet? Are your feet feeling the ground? If you're a fetus, so take a, take a deep breath and just feel yourself feel yourself for a, for a moment wherever you are. If you're 13 uh, stories above the ground or two stories above the ground, feel yourself connected to the ground that you are in. Take a moment to feel that. Urban, suburban, rural, wherever you are, mountains, plains, deserts, just feel yourself connected to the ground that you are on right now, wherever that is. Feel yourself connected to the elements of that ground, whatever water you're near to, the earth of that, of that place you're in right now, the air, the fire of that place. If it's near a volcano, feel that volcano, whatever, whatever that fire, whatever those elementals are there. The plant life, the animal life too. Feel yourself connected to that land in the same way. And also feel yourself connected to the ancestry of that land. Wherever, wherever you are, feel yourself connected to the ancestry of that land. Take a moment to feel that. What does that mean to be connected to the ancestry of this land that you are on right now? If you were born there, feel that too. If you migrated from there, feel that what it was like for your ancestors to come to that land. 
So I invite you to feel the ancestors of that land. And also I invite you to feel your ancestors in that land, on that land that you're on right now. However that is, however you connected. So if you find yourself, if you find hearing your ancestors and the ancestors of that land going, what are you doing here? Just sit with that question. What am I doing here? What am I doing? What are we doing here? So I'm going to tell you a story. Years ago, I was lovingly kidnapped by a group of elder Native American medicine men. I'm originally from Guatemala, and I'm a total mutt. My mother was from the United States. My father was from Guatemala, and I have about six or seven different ancestries mixed in me. But somehow I've been following the call of the land. My mother was a nurse. My father was a doctor. So everything that I've been following in my life is basically trying to understand how to be in service to life. So this adventure has taken me as a musician, translator, mentor. So everywhere I go, I always end up listening to people's stories and working with people. So today I'm going to share this story with you. My elders shared the story with me a long time ago, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to run ceremonies, and particularly the Stone People's Lodge. And this is one of the stories that comes with the lodge. Imagine a vast, desolate field. There are no plants, there are no animals, but one decimated tree sitting in the middle of it. It is bleak, the environment is dark. All of a sudden, from the west, emerge these horses, some coming down from the sky, some from just the west, some from under the ground. Black horses emerge, <clears throat> storming into the field. From the north, red horses appear, coming into the field too, looking at the black horses and doing, oh, what are they doing here? I thought this was my field. From the east, yellow horses appear, the same with the same question, what are they doing here? What are they doing here? This, I thought this was my field. From the south, white horses appear. Same thing, from the ground, up from the sky, from the, just from the south, these horses appear. From the sky, blue horses descend. Again, and they're finding themselves in this field with horses of other colors. What are they doing here? What are they doing here? I thought this was my field. And from, from under the ground, from the roots of the tree, green horses appear. All of a sudden, there's many, these masses of horses from all directions find themselves in this field wondering what they are all doing there and why are their horses of different colors? What are they doing here? What are they doing here? And we don't like those. We don't like those horses. We don't like those horses. We don't like them. I don't know anything about them. So they'll start, you know how horses are. Sometimes they get nasty, they get agitated. Some of them would bite, some of them would scratch, some of them would kick, but at the same time trying to figure out what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. This is my field. No, I was here first. No, this is my field. No, what are you doing here? Eventually, they realized none of them were going to go anywhere. So they settled down for a little bit. At the same time, they started looking around and they realized, oh, this is interesting looking horses. Some of them are kind of cool, you know, and maybe they are funny. Maybe they know some stories. Maybe they know some recipes. Maybe they know about food. But at the same time, still very cautious with each other. Once in a while, they would rear up nay you know how horses are and try to bite the ones next to them you know they were of different color but eventually they realized that there were no no nobody was going to go anywhere not one of them so they start to settle down you know how horses are they start to prance in place start stomping on the ground and eventually a rhythm or evolves out of their movements and slowly as they prance more and more they start to go around the tree very slowly very diligently they start to go on around the tree and start to generate a sense of reverence and curiosity about each other. And as they start going around the tree slowly with diligence, right? And uh, the word in Spanish is with, with uh, con pertinencia, with con determinación, with determination, they become more and more reverent and curious about each other. Once in a while, still biting one, you know, kicking one, neighing, whining from time to time, but eventually they start going around the tree. The more times they go around the tree, the more reverent the movement becomes. So it turns into this beautiful dance. And as they start to go dance around the tree, slowly they intermingle with each other, they intermix with each other. So pretty soon all the colors are blended. And eventually they start to generate this life force. 
has to start going around the tree. And this life force gets pounded or transmitted into the ground to the roots of the tree. And the tree that was withered, parched, no bark, almost down to nothing, begins to feel the essence of life coming in through the roots. Slowly the bark returns to the tree. Life goes into the branches, the life force goes into the branches and slowly leaves begin to appear. And as the leaves begin to appear, flowers begin to bud and eventually fruits begins. And as the dance turns into a more reverence, more uh, holy event, the tree is restored to life. So this in a way, the question that I have for you, we are the horses. This is where we find ourselves now, historically, at this point in time in the world. So what do we bring to this field? What do we bring to this tree? What do we bring to this decimation that we are in right now that can be a gift that we can share and learn with each other? So as I leave you with this image, I think we're going to go into breakout rooms. And so the question is, what are your gifts that you're going to share with the other horses? If you were a horse, what color would you be? And what would you be? What would your gift be that you share with these other horses? Thank you so much, Miguel. Feels wonderful to begin with myth and story. You're definitely story makers, and it's a paramount moment to decide what kind of story we're creating. So, at Miguel's invitation, I am going to send you into some breakout rooms. We're going to have the opportunity to be in here <clears throat> for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'll be prompting you uh, when it's time to wrap, but we'd really love for you all to feel into what Miguel has just evoked and asked an inquiry. And as you go into the rooms, feel free to introduce yourself, maybe not from mm -hmm. the normal way that you introduce, you know, the, the work that you do, but maybe, um, really drop in a little deeper and at least introduce your watershed, where you're from, your territory, the original peoples that were on the lands, however you want to introduce yourself from place and, and your name and maybe leave it at that for this round. We'll have the opportunity later to meet some other people and you can talk maybe a bit more about your work, but I think for here it's really just awesome to arrive as people and connect in that way. So if everybody could make sure to share the floor well, just Feel your way into who goes first, introduce yourself briefly, and then answer the inquiry that Miguel set. Miguel, would you mind writing the inquiry in the chat for everybody so they can see it before I send them into breakout rooms? Um, so take your time, meet some people, answer this uh, question authentically, and uh, I'll be prompting you along the way to make sure everybody has a chance to share your voice. And I'm looking forward to you getting to meet some interesting people, and then we'll come back and we'll hear some highlights uh, about what came from the dialogue that you're about to jump into. Um, before I drop you in, any quick questions? Okay, so I will also put in the broadcast, we prompt again, Miguel will add it to the chat here. Enjoy your time in the breakouts and we'll see you in just a little bit. They should be open now if you wanna jump in. Should make them on my phone and I'm not seeing a notification. How about now. Oh, there How we go. Now? Okay, got it. Go. Yes. <laughs> got it. Go. Enjoy, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I hope that that was interesting and dynamic for you and that you met some fascinating people and got to explore some terrain as the horses, the many horses. Um, I'd love to hear just some highlights if anybody feels courageous enough to share. I'd love to hear a couple of voices about maybe what really stood out for you or what was something that you sort of 
were particularly sparked by. So feel free just to either raise your hand or do the participant chat. Um, Cause I can't quite see all of you on the screen at once, but I'd love to hear some voices. How was that? What sparked in that conversation? I just like that there's people from all over the world <clears throat> on this call. It's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. I appreciate it. Many that. horses of many colors. <laughs> that is the but At the same time, I would say the, the mindset is common, right? Like you just, uh, I mean, we had four in our room and I would say we were just like, yep, we need to work on this. <laughs> and, and it's different aspects and angles, you know, coming at it from different ways but the sort of commonality of mindset and approach and that this is a problem that needs our attention in a variety of ways was interesting. Thanks, Roy. I also think the opportunity to go a little bit deeper to under the surface about where people are at is um, very liberating and, and helps to spark the unexpected conversations and connections. And, and uh, thank you for that. That's the color purple sort of uh, struck mm. a strong chord in our mm. session. I love that. The mixing of the colors turns into purple. That's really Transcendence, awesome. yeah, that was a, a big wish. Thank you, Deborah. Um, for me, uh, we didn't get to specific colors as much as we more recognized that um, the, the degree at which diversity played a role in our lives. There's Jose came into the Bay Area with a great deal of diversity as an immigrant. Um, for, <clears throat> for me, I, I grew up in a very homogenous uh, you know, community and had no diversity and always felt the odd person out. And as soon as I could leave, I went looking for diversity. Um, and so it was uh, sort of one of the things that really struck me was seeing, seeing that in my own life, reflecting that I'd never quite thought about that before, but yeah. recognizing that I was I was a rainbow horse looking for other rainbow horses. <laughs> a couple more thoughts, and I invite maybe somebody's normally shy in these circles to take a chance and jump in with your thoughts. Your voice is very welcome. I'm gonna let the pause go a little longer. The uncomfortable silence, the beautiful space in between, just to see if anybody who's like, I almost might say this, but I don't wanna jump in. I'm gonna invite you to jump in anyway. I just uh, just got up to my rooftop. Hi everyone. And uh, here's the sunset, sort of just post sunset. Just showing, and I'm in Zurich, Switzerland. By the way, little panorama. Oh, you got the church bells. Thanks. Well, I'm in between. Yeah, actually in about five minutes if you, if you really want to hear them. So that's me. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. Anyone else, anything really spark or stand out in that last session before we move on? I just want to acknowledge that in the in the group that I was in, everybody's actually doing something. It's not just theoretical, but it's like boots on the ground. And I think it, it seems to me that that's a really important aspect. It's not just theory or or ideas or metaphors, but rea living reality. And I think that's um, just something to acknowledge. I just want to acknowledge that to me, it makes me feel comfortable that it's already whatever um, belief structure we have, we're already putting it to work. And, and the things that we do. Thanks, Miguel. Yeah, I feel like our, <clears throat> I feel like Open Future Coalition has set out to be an integral container for not only the doers, but the beers. Like we're done talking about this, although we need to talk more respectfully and more honestly together, but the talking has to be coupled with our willingness to show up for it. And I feel like everybody we meet in this container um, 
in this field, this ecosystem is very much actively doing. And then I always want to evoke and balancing that with here we are just being, we're being this, you know, moment of emergence, we're being this moment of deep inquiry, we're being this moment of change, we're being this moment of innovation and restructuring and letting systems crumble that need to crumble in order to compost and rebuild something that's more life affirming and just and equitable. And um, to that end, I do salute and bow to each person we keep meeting along the way. There's so many new faces here that I, I'm actually joyful. We know a lot of people and there's a lot of people going to attend these sessions over the next three days, but it's really great to see those that we don't know yet. That just thrills me. Um, so welcome. And uh, I think it's a good segue then this concept of what are we sort of uh, reimagining? Uh, what are we sort of taking that we've built our, and seeing where we can retrofit and redream? Um, not all spaces are empty and waiting for our new innovations. Sometimes the work is to take what is and to be willing to do the transformation and the transition and be willing to do the work of, of being something that's crumbling and allow it to crumble or I froze. <laughs> I'm up here in the mountains. Uh, with that, though, what I'd like to do is, is segue us into the next part of this conversation today and introduce our friend Tabe Smith, who is part of the Growth Collective and Build a Future Architects, who's going to offer a bit of context and framing and provocation for this particular day's session, which is civic infrastructure and the built environment. Um, and I'm just going to hand it off to you, Taib, to sort of set up this next round. We'll do one more breakout before we close for today. But Taib, take it away. I look forward to having you share your thoughts on this topic. Thank you, Jamaica. And thank you, Caitlin, for the invitation. Um, so my name is Taib Smith. I'm based in Philadelphia. And um, I'm thinking about the provocations for thinking about our civic infrastructure, our built environment and energy. With Miguel mentioning uh, ancestors, I was sitting here in Philadelphia thinking and imagining what would the Lenape people think of our world today, right? And when I think of energy, infrastructure, and the means of developing them, I can't think not think of capital, right? Capital is, is the scarce resource, particularly for marginalized, marginalized communities. So I started thinking about how can we develop regenerative finance models so that we can not think always from a zero sum capacity for marginalized communities or for the unempowered, but how do we share and go from a zero sum to frankly one tribe who is interdependent. I think most of the issues, even if I can tell by the names of the uh, companies and you know projects that you all represent, I know that I'm in community with people who are concerned about the future of our planet. If I think about the more mainstream means um, of propaganda about our food systems, our built environment, our financing, our school systems, they're all from the zero sum, frankly, history of colonialism and the history of a, a broken form of capitalism that doesn't value humanity. So my provocation for all of us is how do we think about, how do we decolonize our environments? How do we reimagine the next 100 years, the next 200 years with the real life constraints that we're all under? You know, climate change is so serious that we're, we're all now going to have climate refugees around the world. And also climate refugees will not be it will not look like what people perceive a climate refugee to be. Um, if I look to the South through hurricanes, if I look through the West through forest fires, if I look to the East through floods, we are all in a perilous position if we don't reimagine how to look at the world through a lens of interdependentness and not um, these fictional fabricated man-made walls that will not protect you from floods, hurricanes, our broken you know, ecological environment. So as we move forward and we, we think about how you know, most of the organizations, most of the institutions that we all have to interact with to affect the built environment, their resources come from the history of, of colonialism, they, from the history of the petrochemical economy. Um, 
so those are real pragmatic challenges that we're all faced with. And how are we going to use our privilege, our intellect, our intellectual capital to really move the pendulum from what looks like a, a very perilous future, right? And, and also, how do we communicate outward of rooms like this? Where, um, I can tell just by the energy that we're in shared space all over the world, but a shared perspective on how to attack the future. I think another provocation is how are we going to interact with the uninformed or the, those who are indoctrinated and that zero sum perspective on our planet. I think that's all of my provocations at this point. Hey, thank you. Is there a specific phrasing that you wanna offer before we send folks into this next sort of like a, a one question, a one bullet question that's hit the mark and that we can put in the chat so people know what we're gonna send them in with. <clears throat> hmm. Well, as, as Mark Beam, who spends a lot of time with me, I, I always, you know, I, I grew up very poor and I dealt with a lot of housing instability. Um, I'm privileged to be in the space that I, I am today. And I always think about how are you going to talk to the money? How are the projects in, in this um, environment going to be financed? How are we going to have the depth and breadth of resources that we need to exist for a hundred years in the space, because the alternative models definitely have the have the resources. So how are we going to how are we going to communicate to get to regenerative finance models that actually affect the work that we all look to do? Thank you so much. So we'll put that into the chat. Maybe Katie, you could grab that and put it in the chat, and. Uh, we're going to send you into the breakout this time a little bit shorter, more like uh, 10 to 13 minutes. Um, but I did mix up the rooms a bit. You might be in with one or two people from the same last time, but mostly you're going to be in with some new folks. So please do just introduce yourself. And again, from that space of where you are in place, I think that's a really powerful question for this particular point. Um, uh, whether it's your, the indigenous territory, the original peoples, like Taib just named in New York with the Lenape, uh, whether it's the watershed that you are currently living on, which is interesting, a lot of people know, and some people have no idea what watershed or where their water comes from. That's always interesting to note. Whether it's the physical built environment that you wanna name. I think introduce yourself via place a little bit more than like what you do. Um, but feel free to slide that in there in terms of context. A lot of you are here because the built environment is either your career, your expertise, and all of us live in a built environment of one kind or another. So please feel free to just lightly introduce yourself, have a go at the inquiry that Teeb has presented, and I'll give some prompts along the way um, to make sure that you know to leave enough time for everybody to have their voice heard. But enjoy the conversation. I'm really curious to hear the harvest of what comes out of this, uh, our, our relationship with the built environment and in some ways, therefore the living world that that built environment is drawn from, resourced by, impacted by, impacting and defined by. So I look forward to hearing what comes through this conversation. The rooms are now open, enjoy. And I'll prompt you along the way when it's time to come back to the room. So welcome from that second breakout all. As like last time, I don't get to jump in these breakout rooms, so I'd love to hear voices, highlights, anything that sort of really sparked you in that part of the conversation that Taib provoked. Feel free to jump in and share some, some highlights. Jamaica did a great job putting four connectors together. So uh, okay. I think uh, climate change is pretty much solved. Great. Fantastic. Thank you, Russ. I'm so glad you have it buttoned up because I haven't had a vacation in years. I would really love to hang out on a beach for a little while. <laughs> Thanks, Russ. Um, <laughs> anybody else? Any any sparks from that particular conversation? Shivani, welcome. I felt like um, just in, in the start of, you know, the start of this beautiful week together, this was a perfect example of we couldn't even we couldn't even get to the meal 
because the appetizer of just getting to know each other's names and a little bit about each other was such a such a enthralling experience. And so very much looking forward to a week filled with uh, love and connection and and also inspiration. And um, yeah, just wow, it's we're, we're on the uphill ride of the energy that's already coming. So that's beautiful. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That was the intent. We couldn't just drop into content each day that this community connection, um, we'll be doing this each morning. It's really important to set the frame for a good conversation. Even if you don't see any of these other folks again, or even if you know different people drop into different sessions and we're sort of mixing the whole, uh, the whole pot here, it feels really great to spend a little time going, really, this is about connecting more than anything. That's the, that's like the biggest, most important thing we could do. And from there, see, you know, see what else we could move forward on. So I appreciate this time as well. And I'm so grateful. So many of you showed up this morning and um, we will be doing this for the next two mornings as well. If you are aching for that time, that's not so specific to a particular topic, but just to connect and meet, um, any other key highlights before I sort of start getting into housekeeping to get us into these next sessions we're going to kick off. Any other things that really stood out from the conversation that you just had? I'll say that our group was talking about how it's all about how we need to change the ways that we looked at capital. We need to look at the natural capital and the things that provide us our, our well-being um, and the needs that we all have, especially as communities and communities in need and the ones that need to sustain the projects which keep us in the systems which keep us thriving. Thanks, Jake. Any other thoughts or voices? One thing we discussed briefly was the idea that um, in, for all of us, uh, communication is vital with any audience that we're trying to reach and when we're trying to talk to the money these same principles apply of trying to understand where they're coming from and what language they speak and being able to translate uh, the message and the spirit of what we're doing into language that's going to be palatable to that particular audience let me tell you, friend, as somebody who does a lot of weaving around the world, one of the biggest, most humbling constraints I'm finding is translation. And that sometimes means language, language barriers, but sometimes it means worldview perspective barriers. And one of the most important things we could do is actually take the time to make sure we're understanding each other, that our language is inclusive and inviting, that we take the time to find a way to move through constraints of either language or worldview constraint to really have conversations that uh, allow everybody to have a voice that's like huge those those barriers of being able to even communicate even though we think we have this very advanced you know the internet here we all are from around the world and yet really like how do we actually communicate across those barriers is like and how do we translate what we mean and meaning make together is is a huge factor to actually being able to radically cooperate or collaborate. So thanks for bringing that part up. And I hope we, we all have ways we can improve. Certainly I'm faced every day with how to improve upon that. So thank you for naming that. I also wanted to note in the chat that I had put to your point about multi-capital ways of viewing capital or ways of viewing value. I'm gonna put it that way. The Meta Integral Group has an incredible map that's this like four, four dimensions, 10 capitals, you know, beyond sort of some of the other capital maps I've seen of really seeing all these ways to ascribe value, get out of the word capital, even just value flows. So that's a really great thing to look at. I really appreciate their maps of how we look at wealth and value through multiple lenses. Um, any other key voices before I get us into sort of queuing up for the next sessions for the day? Uh, one thing that came out of our group was the idea that relationship is the currency of every living system and um, that that the value of currency is in the current it, as it's moving that's where the value is that it that it's moving um, so one millionth of one percent of the population hoarding capital is not working for the planet no it's not and it's and, also a yeah. system that's bound to crumble because it's yeah. not the way that life works. And, um, and the other feeling is that this form here is an indicator that we've already turned the tipping point towards life. Well, may that be so then. 
Yeah, let it be so. Exactly. I just wanted to add one more thing that came up in the conversation that we had this in the planning meeting uh, yesterday and also this morning. The fact is sustainability, which is like a key word in all of these processes, but sustainability is also based on what you were saying, Elizabeth, is on relationship. And relationship is also figuring out how to create intimacy, you know. So it's really important to figure out how to be intimate, not only current with yourself, and this is why it's really important to understand the value of personal internal work. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the, um, what I call social activism or the, the dialectics of activism uh, come crashing down over a certain period of time because a lot of the individuals don't have not done internal personal work to sustain them over an arc of several years, so they get seduced by power and responsibility. So this is really important to, to consider here if we're talking about sustainability, right? Generations usually are calculated in 20 year spans, but most native people see it's either 100 or 120 years per generation. So we're looking at change, changes here that have been in a, that, that need to be addressed not only from generations in the past, but generations into the future. And we have to be willing to address that on a long-term arc there's no immediate cure, but how do you foster gestationally how to increment this? And I think this is a good thing to, 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 to keep in mind. Thank you, Miguel. And I'll go even one step deeper and say, you know, sustainability is sort of a baseline, but I'm really excited too to put some meaning around this very buzzy word of regeneration. And really my understanding of living systems, which I'm a total geek on, is that living systems and regeneration is about the life death life cycle. You have to be willing to let things die and compost and renew to create new life. So along with sustaining and just getting to a baseline of sustainability and access and equity and basic survival for all humans, I'm excited about the prospects of what we can sort of compost and rebirth so that we actually get to any stasis of thriving and that we're actively uh, planting trees for the next generations of fruits, which we may never eat, but it's not about us eating the fruit. It's about thinking about the next generations and thinking about actively regenerating and restoring the planet and the viability of the planet to sustain and regenerate life for those next, you know, hundred years and the many generations to follow. And that is a different worldview in some ways that folks have been sort of considering we have to at least be sustainable. I always want to lean into yes. And we also need to be regenerative and actively engaging in how to recycle and renew for the next coming cycles. So thank you so much, Miguel. And thank you both Miguel and Taib for offering the provocations and joining us and be a part of this crafting this conversation this morning and to Mark and the Guild of Future Architects for partnering with us and to all of you here who joined. I genuinely feel so much gratitude. This feels like such a good way to start this next three days. Um, with that, we're going to go ahead and kick off some of our topics and sessions. Uh, for those of you, I think everybody now has been added to the calendar, which has Zoom links and session times and session topics for all of the three days. The invitation is to jump in as you can. Nobody expects, except for me and Katie, that you'll be chained to your desk facilitating or participating for the next nine hours straight. Uh, we will. You don't have to, though. You can take breaks, but do jump into conversations. Um, one thing would be try to come to a conversation where you think you can stay so that we aren't disruptive, that the intent is to join a conversation, but you do not have to join all of them. And those who join every single session get a special prize at the end. You can come and claim it on Thursday evening and check in with me and if you can vow that you put the badge on that you attended all sessions I have a very special prize for you but for the rest of you I think the prize is simply to have this amazing opportunity to connect and consider and share your work and hopefully grow some new connections and possibilities um, so if anybody isn't on those calendar invites and isn't sure how to access the sessions please do put your email right now into the chat I will go ahead and ensure that you get on those calendar invites so you can join the sessions as you can uh, for this sake this room is going to stay open and we'll continue continue on with a conversation about interagency collaboration in times of displacement. Kevin, who's here, uh, Shivani, who are here, are co-hosting that session. So you can stay in this room. We'll give a little minute to reset, and then we'll kick the room back on for those who'd like to stay in for the interagency collaboration in times of displacement, talking about refugee issues. 
uh, and, and, and more. And then for those who'd like to continue on to the wellness in the built environment, Katie's gonna put the Zoom link in the chat. Uh, you can go ahead and leave this particular session. And if you wanna join the conversation about wellness in the built environment, then you can go ahead and jump into that Zoom session. And then we'll be back on this chat at 11.30 for the Global Roundtable of the Bioregional Civic Infrastructure Projects. It's gonna be really epic for people who wanna see some examples in action from the um, experts that we have curated so it's a full day. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause this particular session. Those staying on with me, please feel free to just take a minute and then we'll kick off the next round. And thank you. And I look forward to seeing you all uh, along the journey. <laughs>